fruit fly, Drosophila melanogaster, has been studied extensively as a relatively simple model for cell differentiation in animals. During fertilization, a single sperm cell enters a mature egg, and the haploid sperm and egg nuclei fuse to form a diploid nucleus. Only a few hours after fertilization, the cells of a developing fruit fly embryo become irreversibly determined to differentiate into specific tissues in the adult fly. When you have completed this exercise, you should understand the events of Drosophila embryogenesis and understand how the position of each nucleus determines its fate in the developing fruit fly. After the haploid sperm and egg nuclei fuse, the resulting diploid zygotic nucleus undergoes a series of ten rapid cleavages within the central yolky regions of the egg. The embryo is called a syncytium at this point because it is a single cell with multiple nuclei. After eight cleavages, the resulting 256 nuclei begin to migrate to the outer edge of the cell. During this migration, the nuclei undergo two more cleavages, resulting in 1,024 nuclei. Most, but not all, of these nuclei enter the cortical regions of the egg. About 90 minutes after fertilization, the majority of the nuclei have reached the cortex. At this point, the nuclei gain the ability to transcribe RNA polymerase II genes and produce proteins. They undergo another three rounds of cleavage, leading to a dense packing of about 6,000 column-shaped nuclei enclosing the central yolk. During a one-hour period, from two to three hours after fertilization, cell membranes form between adjacent nuclei. By three hours after fertilization, the embryo has been transformed into a cellular blastoderm, essentially a hollow ball of cells. When the nuclei reach the edge of the cell, they are totipotent, meaning they have not yet taken on a specific identity and can give rise to any cell type. Just after cellularization, however, the nuclei have been irreversibly determined to differentiate into specific tissues in the adult fruit fly. The location of each nucleus determines its fate. Cell fate is determined in part by localized mRNA in the Drosophila egg. For example, the Oscar mRNA is located at the posterior pole of the egg cell. The Oscar mRNA encodes an RNA binding protein that is responsible for the assembly of polar granules. The approximately 30 nuclei that migrate into the polar plasm bud off of the main body of the embryo along with the polar granules, and the resulting pole cells differentiate into germ cells. Cell fate is also determined by concentration gradients. For example, the dorsal protein is a regulatory protein that is initially distributed throughout the cytoplasm of the unfertilized egg cell. However, transport of the dorsal protein into nuclei is controlled by a cell signaling molecule called Spotzel. Spotzel concentration is highest in the extracellular matrix on the ventral side of the egg cell. This concentration gradient leads to higher concentrations of dorsal protein in ventral nuclei, with lower levels of dorsal protein in nuclei located in lateral regions. This may seem confusing, since dorsal protein is found in ventral nuclei. The name of dorsal protein comes from the fact that the concentration of dorsal remains high at the dorsal side of the egg, since none of the dorsal protein has entered the dorsal nuclei. The activation of some genes targeted by the dorsal protein requires peak levels of the dorsal protein, while others can be activated by intermediate and low levels. Other proteins can also act on the genes targeted by the dorsal protein, leading to patterns of expression. How well do you understand Drosophila embryogenesis? In this section, you will find out.
Question 1. How many times do the diploid nuclei divide before cellularization? Question 2. Which of the following represents an embryo in which the nuclei have been determined to differentiate into specific tissues in the adult fruit fly? Question 3. What would happen if the Oscar mRNA molecules were deposited at the anterior pole of the egg cell rather than the posterior pole? Question 4. You have determined that a particular nucleus on the ventral side of the embryo gives rise to a leg in the adult fruit fly. What would happen if this nucleus was moved to the dorsal side of the embryo before cellularization? Question 5. Which of the following might happen if the cell containing the nucleus from question 4 was moved to the dorsal side of the embryo after cellularization? Question 6. The twist gene is only activated by peak levels of the dorsal protein in the nucleus. What would happen if the concentration of Spotzel was uniformly high around the entire embryo? After fertilization, the haploid sperm and egg nuclei fuse to form a diploid zygotic nucleus. This nucleus undergoes a series of ten rapid cleavages, during which most of the nuclei migrate to the periphery of the cell. The nuclei then undergo another three rounds of cleavage, leading to about 6,000 densely packed, column-shaped nuclei enclosing the central yolk. Cell membranes then form around the nuclei, transforming the egg into a cellular blastoderm. When the nuclei reach the edge of the cell, they are totipotent. Just after cellularization, however, the fates of the nuclei have been irreversibly determined to differentiate into specific tissues in the adult fruit fly. This determination is accomplished through localized mRNA and concentration gradients in the Drosophila egg. You have completed this exercise.